So, I came across a video on YouTube not so long ago about how modern day Nickelodeon is a shell of its former self, about how the popular cable channel has lost its way, about how nothing on the channel now stacked up to its glory days, the glory days of shows like The Fairly Odd Parents or Danny Phantom. At which point I just sighed. Not because the video's assessment of the channel is necessarily wrong. At this point, I cannot speak to the quality of present day Nickelodeon. I haven't had cable since 2011, and haven't really been invested in its programming since Avatar The Last Airbender ended. It may actually be true that the channel is on a downward spiral, but the impression this video gave me was not one of actual critical analysis. It was instead about a young adult realizing that they'd reached the point where they were not the target demographic anymore and railing against it. I recognize this because, well, I went through the exact same thing with their cartoons. I saw things like the Fairly Hot Parents and Danny Phantom as the watering down of the glory days of Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. I was that 20 year old, developing their own nostalgias for the first time and being resentful that a younger generation of viewers was coming up after me and that this thing that I had so much emotional attachment to was now catering to them and not to me. And I'm hardly the first of this cycle. There were people who saw my shows and thought it was the end of Nickelodeon's golden age, the age of you can't do that on television. And certainly there was people who saw that era of Nickelodeon and thought it a perversion of what their shows like Pinwheel stood for. And it'll continue like this into the future. No doubt in 2025, if man is still alive, we'll be seeing videos about how nothing these days stack up to the Loud House. I mean, there's a decent amount of these Nickelodeon Sucks Now videos on YouTube. Uh, here, here, look at this one. That's pretty straightforward. This guy thinks Nickelodeon is a shell of its former self. Uh, when was this made? Oh, 10 years ago? And this is hardly a phenomenon exclusive to Nickelodeon. It's where all the complaints about how MTV not playing music videos anymore comes from. It's the reader thinking current young adult novels is a pale imitation to the days of Harry Potter. It's the moment you're no longer the target demographic. It's that sinking feeling when you realize, this isn't for me anymore. This is for someone else. I don't resent these YouTubers for having these feelings. I had them too. It was a major signifier that childhood was over and you could never go back. But these feelings are not useful in assessing actual quality of content. Depending on how you count it, 2017 marks the 40th anniversary of Nickelodeon. 40 years worth of children having come and gone. 40 years of trends and changing business models and new technologies and varying creative choices. It's worn a lot of hats over the years. It's one of the oldest cable channels still running. It's older than CNN, ESPN, the Disney Channel, AMC. It's certainly the oldest non-movie cable channel. HBO and Showtime are only a few years older than it. Nickelodeon's importance in the development of cable television cannot be understated. Not just because it's one of the seminal channels, not just because of its own spin-off channels used to fill out cable packages like TV Land and Noggin, but also because Nickelodeon's airtime served as a proving ground for other landmark channels. Without Nickelodeon, we might not have the Movie Channel, A&E, BET, or even the poster child of 80s television, MTV. I think that's a legacy worth examining at length. The history of Nickelodeon is a history of a medium, a brand, a corporation, and a pop cultural identity all in one. A history that's really worth getting into the nuts and bolts over. So that's what we're doing. This is Knickknacks, a show-by-show -show history of Nickelodeon. Each episode will be a close examination of a Nickelodeon program, presented in roughly chronological order. Chronological by year, at least, if not chronological by exact premiere date. Partially because the further you go back, the harder that information is defined. Partially because I think it makes for better flow if I talk about certain shows in certain orders. Each episode will focus on one show from premiere to cancellation, with the focus being on what it contributed to the general mythos that was Nickelodeon. And yes, if all works out, there will be an episode for every show that aired on the channel, including that one time they just played reruns of Mork and Mindy. Why? Because somebody in the Nickelodeon corporate offices decided that the channel's intents and values were reflected by Mork and Mindy reruns. Clearly, some shows are more interesting to talk about than others, so you can expect some episodes to be an hour while other episodes are only seven minutes. Also, not every show is available in its entirety. Some shows never got a home video release. Some shows just have no existing footage available to the public. This is especially true early on. 
For example, six shows aired on Nickelodeon in 1979. One show had one official VHS release and about nine hours of footage recorded to tape. One show has exactly one half hour episode recorded from television. One has about 20 minutes worth of random clips available. One has about two minutes worth of random clips available. And two shows have no footage available at all. So you'll have to forgive me if I have to do some guesswork on these missing shows. This will largely stop being a problem once we get to the 1990s. And yes, before you ask, there will be dedicated episodes to things like Nickelodeon Studios and the Nickelodeon Movies, since they also feed into the pop cultural identity of Nickelodeon. And from all of that, we should be able to answer some questions about the channel's successes and failings, about its peaks and valleys. What were the times when the channel was actually great? What times did it actually suck? And is the Nickelodeon of 2017 actually as bad as these firmly nostalgia-goggled YouTubers seem to think? Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. So, next time on Nick Knacks. Before we get into the shows proper, we need to cover some prehistory and talk about the early days of cable, and an odd little experiment going on in Columbus, Ohio. If this sounds like a project you'd like to support, I do have a Patreon, but liking, sharing, and subscribing is also awesome and totally free.